Hi, it's Jessica DeMasso with WTF Health. Joining me right now, I have Aaron Strout. He's the Chief Marketing Officer for W2O Group and the host of the What to Know podcast. So great to have you with us. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. It's a little intimidating to interview an interviewer. I, I always find, so I agree with you. It's also nice, though, to have someone that understands a little bit of the rules of the road. Um, do you like being interviewed, though? I don't mind it. I, I hate it. I found that I like interviewing more because you do control the conversation, but it's also fun to turn the tables once in a while. All right. So we're turning the tables on you, and so we want to hear everything about everything you're doing. And so start out with W2O Group. You guys are a marketing PR agency, but talk a little bit more about everything that you guys touch because it's it's pretty impressive. Sure. Yeah. So we're an integrated marketing communications firm. Uh, we really love analytics, and it sits at the heart of what we do. So we're about 1,100 people now, and of that, about 150 people sit in the data science, research, and analytics team. Uh, we work with a lot of big pharma and biotech, but we also work with payer providers, and the reason we're crossing paths is digital health space. And we really care a lot about the startup ecosystem and all the great things that are going on right now. And we really offer a uh, complimentary set of services from the, as you mentioned, comms, uh, all flavors, digital, website, advertising, social media, you name it. All right. So tell me a little bit, I guess, about some of the challenges that some of these com companies are coming to you with when it comes to communications. Because healthcare is notoriously complicated. If you get anything from the uh, from a health plan in particular, you're like, what is this and what is it saying to me? It's not much better if you're getting stuff from right. pharma. So how are you, you know, from, from an agency standpoint, what's your philosophy in terms of making all of this a little bit more consumable from, from the average person's perspective? Well, you're hitting the nail on the head. And that is that we live in a world, you know, where everything's been appified, everything's consumerized. You have Amazon who's now using technology to say, Jessica, I know what I think you're going to buy, and I'm going to move it to a facility close to you. So instead of two days, it's actually going to take a day, or maybe even that same day. Yeah. So we have this amazing experience, Netflix, everything's on demand, and Hulu. And you know, healthcare is starting to get in that direction, but it's not anywhere near what that sort of amazing user experience has been, consumer experience has been. And so we're helping clients get better about that. We just did a big acquisition, which by the time this airs may not be so big um, in terms of the news, but 21 grams. They're a 150-person advertising agency in the health space. They also do medical communications. Awesome. And why I mention them is their CEO, Bob Blink, is a big believer in making this as easy and fun as selling sneakers. <laughs> and we all know, like, Nike does a gorgeous job. We would like to be able to do that on behalf of our clients. Okay, so I used to have a comms job back in the day in a big healthcare organization, and it was like, well, we can't say these things. We can't dumb down the language, even though you tried to to hit that that twelve year old reading level, right, right? To make things understandable, it's like there are certain words like or concepts even like deductible, or you know, I mean, like there are certain things that are a little bit more complex. Right. What is your rebuttal to that? Because I was looking for one of those years ago, and it's like there's I, I don't know what to say back to that. Well, I don't know as though. As a rebuttal, I think one of the things that we see, and our clients are embracing this, is if you can get in with the compliance folks and the legal folks and making sure that they're part of the loop, they want to do the right thing and they want the company to be successful just like you know we do, just like the client does. So I think we're starting to look at some common language. We're starting to find that because of this whole consumerization push, and now you have the Amazons and Facebooks and Salesforce is getting into this. You have the Walgreens and Walmarts and, you know, yeah. all those folks getting into the game seriously, that if you're not starting to try to make it a more sexy, consumerized experience, that um, you're going to go out of business. So everyone on their teams, I think, are starting to figure out that we can work together to find ways to make it a little more digestible, a little more consumer friendly, and we don't have to use such big, ugly words that no one really understands. I want to go back to um, your analytics team. And I want to know what they're doing. So <laughs> tell me a little bit about that side of the business. I mean, you, you started out by saying that, that all of that is, is fundamental to the core of who you are. It is the center of what you guys do. So what are they, what are they tracking? What are they looking at? Yeah, so that's a bigger than a bread box question, but I love that you're asking. It's they take really every available piece of public data they can. That can be, you know, uh, health data records. It could be um, script, you know, script writing. It could be uh, Medicare, Medicaid data, social media data. And what we really try to do is we have a dozen uh, data scientists on the team. Wow. And so they're looking at ways of sort of processing the data. And then we have really smart people on the other side that can then take that and actually pull insights out of it. Okay. So 
A, it's we're not using any kind of data that's like, you know, dark web. It's all above board. It's all available. Uh, we find the right partnerships. We put them together in different ways. We look at things like influencers. We look at what's the projected outcome if a, a company wants to sell pharmaceuticals. Like, what can they expect for every dollar they put in? Um, we look at things like how can we make your social media more efficient, right? So all of these things that make companies do their job better. And the team like I said, all the way from research to analytics are skilled in doing these processes and working with the right experts on our broader team to bring them to life. I think that that's really interesting. And I, th I love the, the take of this. And I'm thinking to myself, it's like, are we going to start seeing this new era then of healthcare marketing that's m more uh, akin to what we do see from those companies that you mentioned, the retail companies, like, you know, even beyond like Walmart, right. but the sneaker companies, or even like the, the tech companies that have these different m modes of reaching people with just the right product and in the advertising at the time that they're looking to make a purchase. Do you think that we're going to head in that direction anytime soon? Or is healthcare pretty far from that? What are your thoughts? Well, well, farther than maybe some other industries, but we are starting to see a sea change. And I know you've been at a variety of conferences lately where, you know, we had something the other day with Carolyn McGill from Ation. They're looking at real world evidence. So yeah. what are the other sources where we can get data, Fitbit data, et cetera? Fitbit just got acquired by Google. Yeah. We know that the Apple Watch is obviously now FDA approved. So I do feel like the data and the desire are both there. Mm -hmm. So it will take a while, yeah. but I think we're a lot closer now than we were five years ago. And, you know, with all the technology and the capabilities we have, I do feel like there's a thawing out and a speeding up of all that's possible. So, yeah, the lines are blurring between those consumer companies and the healthcare companies. And that's true, I think, in product and also in marketing. I agree. Very cool. So tell me a little bit about the podcast. I want to give you a chance to talk about that. So what to know. So sure. what kinds of things are you covering on the show? Who are some of your guests? So the main theme is innovation, and okay. we try to stay pretty focused on healthcare and in a, digital health in particular. Okay. Um, we have had the luxury of having people like Katie Couric. Which is Kate, amazing. Well, it was an out-of-body experience, I right? Because she's been an idol my whole life, and she's so great and really nice in person. But she's a huge advocate for cancer. She helped found mm -hmm. Stand Up to Cancer. Um, we've had people like Tyler Florence. I had some of the students from the uh, March for Our Lives. Oh. Uh, but we've had people like Dr. Eric Topol and Dr. James Allison, who was the Nobel Prize winner for uh, medicine a couple of years ago, and really finding out who's moving the space forward and what are they thinking about, what are the breakthroughs. And we have some of our clients, right, some of the CEOs of our digital mm -hmm. health uh, companies, and really just wanting to keep a finger on the pulse. All right. Any any good um, gossip or takeaways that you could share with us from your podcast? Anything that hit hit home with you that somebody said that you were like, yeah, that's pretty spot on for where we're at as an industry right now or where we're headed? I don't know if there is any good gossip. I would say I with, love gossip. with Katie Couric, there was a little bit, bit of political gossip, which Ooh. I thought was interesting. I will <laughs> spare Katie from doing that right now. But it okay. was interesting talking to someone that has talked to presidents, yeah, I can't was imagine. like in the middle of it all. Um, I will say that you know, people like uh, Glenn Tolman, who I know you've interviewed yeah. from Livongo, fascinating guy. And you want to learn about sort of what's going on in the industry and how to do business right. He's a guy that, you know, why wouldn't you want to talk to him and pick right. his brain? Yeah, no, he's a good one. He's definitely a good interview. Although he will never, he, to this day, I think will still um, say that they are not going public to me because I've been asking for so long and it's just, it's an ongoing joke now. It's terrible. So what's next? ahead for you guys, W2O Group, either that or for the podcast as well. Are you filming, are, are you recording, not filming, new uh, new episodes? Uh, I drop new episodes every Thursday awesome. when I can. I'm probably a little behind. Mm -hmm. I need to do some catching up because uh, we scrambled toward the end at the you know end of last year. Uh, we do a lot around South by Southwest. This okay. may air pre or post that, but uh, we do a lot of events at South by, J.P. Morgan, ASCO. And uh, in terms of what's next, you know, we're, we've just digested four new acquisitions that really make us stronger in the MedCom scientific strategy, as well as now the advertising space. And we're just constantly talking to our clients and finding out what do they want. And part of that is actually spending time with them at events like this at J.P. Morgan and letting them hang out with us for two or three days, doing fun things, educational things, and making sure that what we're doing and what we're offering is aligned with what their needs are. Awesome. Well, have a great year. It'll be, I, I look forward to hearing new episodes of the podcast. Again, that's what to know. Thank you so much for joining us here on WTF Health. I'm Jessica DeMassa. Thanks for watching.